to the Becoming Podcast. Once again, we have a wonderful guest with us, Maida Lally. to thank our sponsors a bit of a call out to you jim at dreaminc.eu and hotel boutique leonardo where we're doing the filming so thank you sponsors thanks very much so how's it been since we were last together it's been great yeah, yeah. thank you so much for having me back no. it's great to be here yeah we've got good feedback a lot of fantastic feedback a lot of responses and that from us so yeah well done that was really good people loved what you had and a lot of a lot of people wanting to make a move, make a change in their lives. Yeah, my story is quite inspiring about following your dreams and, totally, and uh, totally. following your intuition and finding your purpose. That's key in life. It, it really is. And I think a lot of us, we have these messages come through to us and then we think, oh, no, no, that's crazy. Because we were programmed or told that from our parents or through someone else or through our friends. Oh, no, no, don't be ridiculous. No, just come down to the pub and have a beer with us and, you know, don't worry about all these other sorts of things. But people now are waking up to the fact that they have to do something. Yes, exactly. So we all, oh, we, we're all guided. We all have angels, guides, whatever you want to call it, God, Allah, you know, we all have a spiritual connection. And yes. it's kind of tuning into that and listening to that. But very much yeah. so. And, and I would sort of like to say that if, if I'm praying and there's certain times of the day to pray, like when you talk about the circles and the cycles last time, there's certain times of the day to pray when are more beneficial because the, the veil between the worlds are at their, at their thinnest. So the message gets through. So when you're praying, you're speaking to spirit or mm-hmm. God or whatever. When the intuition comes through, that's them, your guides, your angels, your, your whoever you believe in, speaking to you. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and definitely the certain times that veil is thinner, early in the morning when you yes. first wake up, they say between 4 and 6 a.m., mm-hmm. and then in the evening when you're in that kind of sleepy state, so you're kind of more in tune to your subconscious, that is when you can speak to them and your guides will speak to you. Yeah. It's really, really important, and I'm a big fan of Joe Dispenza. I talked about him last time, um, so he believes you need to open your heart, be in the state of joy, bliss, mm-hmm. gratitude, from the state, you then manifest your dreams. So from the state, you visualize what it is you want. Instead of praying, instead of asking, mm-hmm. you feel as if you have it already from this open-hearted state. And the laws of quantum physics will bring it to you. And that is that is the simplicity of his work. Yeah, Easy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're not, any time that you ask or you, you, or you pray for something, it's almost like begging. So what Dr. Joe says, as you said, he's saying is, is you feel it you have it within you already Mm, exactly you feel as if you have it within you you walk as the future version of you Mm -hmm. that has your heart's desires whether it's the dream job the dream relationship the dream house the dream life uh feel as if you have it already and give thanks that state of gratitude this open-hearted joy for life uh will bring it to you and the more you give the more you receive yes yeah and i know for a lot of people out there you know we are going through a lot of struggles, we're going through a lot of hard times, and it's that belief in yourself and the process, mm. really, is it to, to move us on. Yeah, it's trust. It's, you know, the, the, the world's events recently have broken my heart, you know, and everyone else is at home. Yes. But we have to keep the light in our hearts, we have to stay in the light, and we just have to trust and surrender that everything is exactly as it's meant to be. We're guided by spirit. Yes, yeah, yeah, very much, very much so. Mm -hmm. So getting back onto your specialties, which is, is, uh, you know, everybody we're we're talking about and mentioning, um, detox, Mm -hmm. such a huge topic, huge subject. Please share with us yeah. some of that. Well, in, in like in the last episode, I talked about my health con- concerns in my old life. You know, mm-hmm. when I was in the corporate world, I had serious gut problems, serious skin problems. And fasting and detoxing was a key part of my healing journey. So I started to do these seven-day fasts. Um, about 12 years ago and I think I did seven of them in seven years 
to completely heal my liver and my gut. Right. And so, and now this is the protocol that I guide. I guide groups online to do this deep healing fast. So this is not a fruit juice fast. This is not a rice and bean fast. This is, you know, deep healing to reset the liver, the gut, the nervous system, the mind, the body, and the soul. Right. So when we fast, we start to break down fat cells. Uh, the body uses fat as fuel when there's no glycogen stores, when we've run out of carbohydrates. So when we break down fat cells, our toxins are stored in our fat cells. So if we're not binding and excreting those toxins, they are staying in our lymphatic system, in our blood, they can actually make us sicker. Right. So the reason why my detox is so amazing is that we use uh, binders like bentonite clay, psyllium husk, activated charcoal to bind those toxins and then we eliminate them with um, coffee enemas and deep colonics as well. We also use garlic enemas for candida, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, you feel incredible. The skin shines, the bloat banishes, years of bloating I had ban banished. Actually one client, she was healing herself of cancer naturally for the last 10 years. Her liver enzymes went up for some reason, she was panicking, she did my 10 day cleanse, she retested the liver enzymes went back to normal. Wow. She was ecstatic. So I was really pleased with that. That's like, you know, yeah. scientific proof showing that yeah. it really works to heal. Um, yeah, so get those toxins out. And, you know, the average person is pretty toxic. You know, the, the liver has over 500 metabolic functions, you mm -hmm. know, just, just to detox it, our hormones, our cholesterol. Um, but then on top of that, the environmental toxins around us. The average woman puts on 150 different chemicals before she even leaves the house. Wow. This is nail varnish, this is beauty products, hair products. If you're walking barefoot on bleached floors, your skin mm -hmm. is absorbing those toxins. Mm -hmm. What are you eating from on your plates with toxic fairy liquid or whatever um, yeah. washing powder? All these things are extra for your liver to process. Add in um, antibiotics, add in um, paracetamol. People pop paracetamol like Smarties whenever yeah. they have a pain. Um, so we're adding so many things to our liver. No wonder it's overburdened. No wonder, you know, high cholesterol is often linked to the liver not working because our liver has to metabolize cholesterol. It's not too many eggs, you know. Uh, the same with. Um, the same with uh, our hormones, yeah, mm -hmm. if, if, if women are having hormonal issues, issues, estrogen dominance, the liver, the liver is sluggish because the liver has to metabolize all our hormones, including estrogen. So support the liver, super important. Yeah, for sure. And of course, when we're having all these toxins inside our body and uh, they are there, then in, from inside our body, um, all our emotions, our feelings, Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, you're livid, the old sayings, mm -hmm. you're hard-hearted, you know, you have a pain in the neck. Um, you know, livid is, is to do with anger a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of these emotions, do you, do you find that the, the people that are going through the, to the detoxes with you, they say the seven-day seven day detoxes, mm -hmm. are they releasing some of these emotions at the same time? Yeah, it's a time to go within. So I design it, so it's like a 10-day cleanse with three days pre-cleanse, three days post-cleanse. The pre and post cleanse is a detox for most people. It's no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, no caffeine, no meat, no fish. Basically eating raw vegan or steamed vegan if it's cooler climate. Uh, and that prepares you for the four day fasting period, which is intense. And you're taking green veggie juice and a vegan broth and then these detox shades with the psyllium and bentonite clay and pulling out the toxins two enemas a day. And that's for four days. And I really suggest people to treat that as a mini retreat you know, not be working, not be doing too much because your body is healing, it's repairing, it's releasing. Sure. Sometimes emotions can be released, but definitely you go deep into your meditation. So fasting is biblical, you yes. know, yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, you yeah. go, there's no food between you and God. So you yeah. can go really deep in meditations, uh, really manifest deeply and connect and get clear signs and signals from your guides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we never used to eat three or four, four meals a day. No, I mean that, you know, there's like this fear of hunger. You must eat not only three meals, but three snacks a day. Yes, yes. I mean, if I, if I always go back to caveman days, you know, there would be periods where we wouldn't find any food at all. No. Our bodies are designed to fast. So contraindication, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, if there's a history of severe eating disorders, if there's severe thyroid issues, lots of medications, 
do speak to uh, someone experienced um, before embarking on a fast. You have to be careful. This, but if you're healthy, there is no reason why you can't fast. No. So our bodies are designed to be metabolically flexible, to be going from a fasted to a fed state. Mm -hmm. How well we do that is a big driver for health. Uh, and if you're the kind of person who, you know, you go two or three hours without food and you become shaky, low blood sugars, like, you know, hyperglycemic, there's something wrong with your blood sugars there, you yeah. know, because yeah. everyone should be able to go for two or three hours without eating if you're healthy. Yeah. Uh, and it can be corrected, you know, it can totally be corrected and, and it should be. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've been, you know, haven't, haven't done yours, but I'm looking forward to it at some stage mm -hmm. being able to do that. Um, but I did uh, do a bit of... We'll get into intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you'll, you'll mention a little bit about. Um, but I enjoyed that hunger pain. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time, the first few times, you feel it. But after a while, they will know the body is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, you, when you are fasting, you when you use up all the uh, glycogen, all the carbohydrates, all the glucose stores in the body, you go into ketosis. You're burning fat as fuel. This phase, usually after about 12, 8 to 12 hours for most people, your head is clear. You know, you're energized, you know, mm -hmm. and after three days in, two or three days into the fast, you're feeling energized and amazing. You're in autophagy. So the body's breaking down old cells, right. mitophagy, the body's breaking down old mitochondria, creating new bone cells, creating new blood cells, creating new mitochondria. Because when we eat, we use 80% of our energy to digest foods. So when we're not eating, we're using that energy to repair, for growth, right. for healing. And if you have injuries, they heal you know, much quicker in a fasted state and you, you do feel amazing. Yeah. Last time you, you talked and you said, you know, no eating, was it four hours before bed? No eating four hours before bed. Four hours before yeah. bed, because and when you lie down, yeah. what happens to the body then? Well, the body's just going to sleep, so it's not yeah. digesting. No, you know, so it's, it's just, not just, it just kind of sits there and you don't sleep yeah. well. So I work a lot with insomnia and that's one of the first things I say. Eat most of your food in daylight hours mm -hmm. when uh, the digestion is most active. At night, you're, the body's sleeping, everything's sleeping. It's, yeah. not, it's not a time to eat. Um, the other thing is... Uh, oh, I forgot what was the other thing. No. That's all right. It'll come back. Um, your retreats. You're doing retreats in the beat. They're looking to, to do a couple here uh, in Mallorca as we go along as well. Um, so are they a seven day retreat or how, how are you holding your retreats? Yes, I've been hosting these retreats for the last five years and each year they're more and more magical. Honestly, mm. they're just so wonderful um, to watch people come. They're super stressed, you know, away from their daily lives, away from their kids. You can mm. just see them exhausted and stressed and watch them as the week goes on, the light starts to shine. So we do two yoga classes a day, Ashtanga in the morning and Yin or Hatha in the afternoon. We teach them Yoga Nidra every night, a very deep, relaxing form of meditation. And then we do fun stuff like stand up paddleboard yoga and cacao sound healing. We have a crystal meditation with a lady with all these crystals. We have um, astrology and psychic tarot card reading so all these tools to kind of really transform them and as well as that everyone gets a nutrition consult with me the food is designed by me to be plant-based and gluten-free but gut healing yeah. with ferments uh, and sauerkraut and kimchi homemade and kombucha to totally heal the gut and transform them and most of them all of them they never miss the meat you know they're like oh we yeah. can't believe that it's vegan because I make sure that it's high protein. Right. Often vegan diets can be very carb heavy. Yes. When there's protein in there, people feel full. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that feeling I remember because I was at, when I was living in London and I was vegetarian for a number of years there, and uh, it was the initial part of that feeling of not having meat, mm. but then it goes really quickly. Yeah, yeah, no, it, is, yeah. It's a lovely feeling. Yeah. But I can I can hear the people saying some of them are going to say well. Yeah, well, that's all right for you. You go on a seven-day retreat, but what happens when I go back home again? Well, the beauty of it is that people learn tools to take home with them. Great. We teach people how to meditate. We teach people how to do five sun salutations. And we keep in touch. We meet on Zoom after the retreats. And, wow. you know, I do various nutrition talks throughout. So it's like living with a nutritionist for a week. So they take home a lot of, a lot of nutrition tips. And most of them transform their lives and often they say this is the best week of my life yep. and it's just such a joy to hear yes, you know just yes, to be in yeah. service and to heal people like that so right. yeah fantastic great mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you're big into is fermentation yes exactly so i've been fermenting for years 
Uh, mainly because fermented foods are actually quite expensive to buy them. Right. And as we know, anything homemade is made with love. Yes. It's not pasteurized, there's no chemicals in, there's no shelf life additives. Um, you can make it yourself and mm -hmm. make it with love and it's so nourishing for the gut. So yeah. I host these fermentation workshops. I was doing them online in, in, during the lockdown and in London and in Bitha and now I'm doing them in Parma. I've got one uh, tomorrow. Um, and yeah, teaching people how to make sauerkraut. It's literally cabbage and salt. No one okay. can believe how okay. easy it is. Okay. And kombucha and pickling, pickled radish and yeah. pickling anything. Uh, fermentation is so good because it's just natural probiotics and you don't need much. A tablespoon of kimchi or sauerkraut, like a condiment with every main meal, 200 ml of kombucha before your main meal in the mornings, and that's all you need. It's just a little bit of different bacteria. Right. Okay. Some people react to probiotic foods. I work a lot with gut health. Some people get more bloated with probiotic foods, and that's often linked to SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So if you react to probiotic foods, it could be SIBO, get in touch, it's worth um, mm -hmm. healing that. It can be quite tricky to heal on your own without the right support, you need antimicrobials and stuff. But for most people, probiotic foods are yeah. super, super you know, healing and nourishing. The other things are like miso and tempeh, tamari sauce instead of soy sauce, all contain natural probiotics. Right, so if people are making or, or, or doing their own fermentation, um, what's the length of time, how long does it take for a fermentation process? It's super quick, like sauerkraut and kimchi, seven days if seven it's days. medium mm -hmm. temperature. In the boiling hot meal, because summers it would be ready in about five days. Right. But you can leave it for months. Uh, you know, fermentation started because we never had fridges. Yep. So it was a way to preserve foods all year round. Yes. So, you know, you can make a batch and leave it for months. Mm -hmm. It's a great present to give to people, a healthy present. Yeah, 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 yeah no, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. So we're all halfway through here, well not quite, just over halfway actually, um, but I'd like to, um, to mention um, that uh, I'd love you to, to like and subscribe and to share these videos with these wonderful guests that we're having on here and what they're giving back to the world um, so that you can find out or so you can be notified as soon as we have a new, uh, uh, a new guest that comes on board. So, uh, so that's, that's wonderful. One-on-one um, -on -one nutrition. Working with people like that, what sort of the process, how would people get about doing that with you? If you were here, um, obviously like, like via Zoom uh, rather than the workshops, but one-on-one, -on -one, what do they need? Do they need to be prepared in any way for this? or are they... Well, it's just really an investment of time, you know, and financial investment of course as well. But you have to be in the right headspace to make mm -hmm. the changes. And then, you know, I'm there to guide and support you every step of the way. So firstly, I'll ask um, the individual to fill out a seven-day food diary, everything they're eating, sleeping, drinking, and a very detailed health questionnaire. And then we'll sit down and go through that for 90 minutes, and then I'll come up with a protocol for them to follow. It's always very bespoke and individual based on their likes and dislikes. I'll suggest a supplement protocol to follow, look at blood tests, send them off to the GP. I also use functional medicine testing. We talked last time about genetic testing. What an amazing tool for behavior change that is. Mm -hmm. Stool tests are very useful if there's any gut issues going on. And also dried urine tests to test for uh, environmental toxins and energy metabolism. And then I'll coach them through the plan in a minimum of three months. So we'll meet either weekly, bi-weekly, uh, and check progress, uh, tweak things as we go along. And the results are incredible. Yeah. It's literally life-changing, you know, really. Once people make the changes, they don't go back because right. they feel so good. Yes, you know? yes, yes. People, I specialize a lot in gut health and people, it's amazing how people live with severe gut issues for years and years and think it's normal. Like waking up six months pregnant, you know, like really bad bowels, alternating yes. IBS symptoms. Um, but you don't need to suffer like that. It's, it's possible to, yeah. you know, to not be bloated, sure. to, to eat and feel energized. Yeah. So when we eat, we should be energized. You know, if we're eating and feeling bloated and having to lie down and pass out, that's a reaction that we're having to foods, you know. Yeah. So 
It's really tuning into the body. Yeah. How does this food make you feel? The body can tell you what it needs. You just need to learn how to listen. Sure, it's like a craving, isn't it? You're craving a certain type of food or yeah. fruit or whatever. That's, that's that, that, that process from there. And then with the one-on-ones that you're working with people, uh, if they're working in London, then you can work with their food sources in London. Yeah. And you mentioned last time there's some great markets in yeah. and around London. Um, if they were living in the country, you could work their, their programs around where they're living. Oh, totally. My clinic is on Zoom, so I work with clients all over the world, actually. But I also see face-to-face clients wherever I am in Mallorca. I still have clients in Ibiza Mm -hmm. and contacts in in all the places. And actually, my London suppliers can now ship everywhere for the testing and the supplements. You know, we figured things out post-Brexit. Yeah, Yeah, that's wonderful. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any specific client stories that sort of you share more regularly than others about your success stories. There any that... Well, yeah, I had a client who came on my recent Ibiza retreat in September, Kevin. I worked with him a year ago, and, um, and uh, yeah, I worked with Kevin, I think maybe a year and a half ago, and he came to see me with chronic fatigue. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was um, a, a DJ, quite a famous DJ, and burnt out, um, right. and had been suffering with chronic fatigue for a while. And he was, you know, he was really suffering. He was really suffering. We worked together for six months, progressed a lot, and I helped him to tune into what he really wanted, which was to sell his business yeah. and have more time for him and his family. Cut to, then we stopped working together. Cut to a year later, he books on my retreat, tells me he sold the business, he comes to my retreat, and he's like a different person, right. glowing you know, energized and uh, yeah, he, he was always on the keto diet. Whenever he strayed right. off the keto diet, he would have an energy crash. He was keto for like three years, which mm-hmm. I don't always recommend. It's good to have the flexibility of some complex carbs, but the he, the, the diet was uh, was all plant-based, so it was carb heavy, you yeah. know, and protein rich, but it de- definitely wasn't keto. And he was totally energized and feeling great. So actually, it was a lovely testimonial from him on my uh, Instagram feed. Excellent, yeah. excellent. And that's another thing as well. The people that work night shifts, mm. you know, like the, like the DJs or the hospital workers, the emergency staff, or the, the ambulance or the police or the fire brigade, yeah, it changes a whole... Night shifts are hard. It's difficult. It's difficult for the health. Mm. So they are the research on night shifts is it does does link to to health decline. But it's usually it's due to the circadian rhythm. Our body likes to not only sleep at the same time but eat at the same time. Sure. So if you're disrupting the the cycle and eating all night and eating all day, your blood sugars go really out of balance, and so does the energy. So the best way you know around that is to kind of eat before you go to work. Um, your, your biggest meal and then when you get back uh, eat a little bit but don't eat throughout the night shift so doing like a 12 hour fast during sure. your night shift sure 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 yeah. so if they're coming ways. home they're yeah. tired they have a little snack or something small yeah before they crash, exactly. crash out for the length of yeah. time yeah yeah we're using the fasting tools to help right. the night shift work right. as well the body to adapt yeah to this from there. so mm. I know some of them are on night shift a lot um, I know others are on like two on and then four off yeah. or they change around, but it still takes a little while for that clock to, yeah. to get back into sync again. Mm-hmm. Um, what about, we haven't really talked about liquids, waters, um, keeping your hydration up mm-hmm. and the importance and what we need into it in our body and things. Yeah, our body is 70% water. So, you know, we really need to be average sized person, two liters of water a day, really has to be filtered. In London, don't drink the London tap water. Certainly don't drink the tap water here in Mallorca. Yeah. And those Brita water filters are no good, sadly. No. I mean, then, you know, they do something, but they're not filtering out the heavy metals. So get yourself a good quality reverse osmosis water filter. Yeah, bottled water is okay, but it's plastic. Yeah. If it's sitting in the sun, the BPAs leach into the water. So, you know, we, it's important to find, you know, a good source of water yes. because uh, we, it's a huge part of our health. It helps with skin, yes. helps with energy, but not drinking around meals. So, because when we're eating, we're producing digestive enzymes. If we're drinking around meals, we're washing away those enzymes. That, you know, we're not digesting efficiently. We get really bloated. So, half an hour before eating, one hour after eating. Mm-hmm. In the mornings, I've got half a liter of water. Uh, and I by my bed. That's the first thing I do. Drink that with some electrolytes or a little bit of Himalayan salt. 
um, and then I'm drinking throughout. I usually do intermittent fasting most most days, um, and yeah, I'm drinking all morning throughout my training, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know uh, not not around the meals basically, and not too much after six p.m. because we want to sleep efficiently. We don't want to be waking up two or three times in the night to go for a pee. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure you know, bulking your water consumption early in the morning in between the two meals. Right, right. And of course, the importance of children. Um, you have many sort of younger, younger clients. Yeah, I work with families regularly and mm-hmm. it works really, really well. Often they will sign up as a whole family, mum mm-hmm. and dad and kids, and that's brilliant. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the dad or the mum signs up, then the partner sees, oh my God, what's happened to you? Uh, see yes. how amazing they look and, and then they sign up too right. uh, and yeah it's important to kind of with kids you know we got to train the palate from the young age yes. you know if it's, it's, it's very hard if they, if they get used to beige food and uh, and sugars and things and sugary cereals you know and then it gets to like eight or nine there's some health conditions yes. propping up it's harder to change the palate then yeah. um, so introducing a wide variety of foods uh, and avoiding adding in too many sugars. I know it's hard when there are you know, parties and schools, but if you don't train the palate, if you don't give it to them at home, that it, sugar is a real alien taste. It's yeah. like super strong. Yeah. And I see kids who they won't take it at parties because they don't like the taste of it. No, no, mm. no, no. And, and uh, with our daughter, I mean, she <laughs> has water all the time, um, has some juice all mixed in that and, and with it, which is nice. But um, it's very, very rare the Coca Cola or the Panthers or things from there. Where you, you know, for a lot of families, um, as you see them in the supermarket, they're walking home with you know six packs. Yeah, um, exactly. Full. So yeah, you know. or squashes. They're very sugary. Those orange squashes mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, a little bit of diluted fruit juice is, mm-hmm. is fine. So yeah. it's kind of what you bring into your home. Yeah, mm. yeah, and it's but it's, it's the energy you feel. Mm. You know when you have to, to get about your day to and the mind is so much clearer um, when you when you're energized all these thoughts start coming through all these new ideas you know yeah. and it's fun isn't it really it's, exactly. you, have, you have that uh, adrenaline exactly. and it lasts longer it's not just a quick five or ten minutes but it seems to last longer yeah I mean the key is to, I wake up naturally without an alarm clock I'm kind of no. saying in my head what time I want to wake up and I wake up at that time I'm, I'm out of bed I'm not groggy I'm energized. I don't have stimul. I don't need stimulants to get going in the morning. Yeah. And that is what we need to aim for. Yes. You know? yeah, and it's possible. It's totally possible. It's yeah. not that not that hard to achieve. No, it's not. It's not. Um, so no, it's not hard to achieve. But it does take a little bit of knowing, a bit of commitment about what's going on, and uh, the right people to see and to, to to talk to and to make this decision a part of your life, part of your lifestyle. Um, I mentioned last time, I said, look, if there was one thing you'd like people to take away, uh, is there something you'd like people to, to think about? Besides, hey, contact me. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think I'll leave you with this message of what is your purpose? Mm-hmm. You know, that is often the key to happiness. When I was working in advertising in my previous career, I didn't have a purpose. I was, you know, working for companies, helping sell stuff to people that they don't need. And I, I took the last eight years, I really didn't enjoy it. So once I started to work with healing people, I was a lot happier because I was in service, you know, and I was helping people heal. And the joy of helping others brought joy to my heart. Yeah. So what is your purpose? Mm-hmm. And does, you don't have to be in a service industry, but but what can you do to serve in other areas? Maybe some charity work, yeah. you know, volunteering something. Yeah, the more you give, the more you receive. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's fantastic. my little take home. No, that's great. And, and we're in a, in, a, in a world now where AI is coming in, but there's certain things that AI can't do. And, and talking about giving back to the world, it doesn't have to be just like that, but it could be through art. Mm-hmm. It could be through writing, it could mm. be through crafts. Mm-hmm. AI, I mean, they can do that a little bit, but they can't bring your heart, mm. as Dr. Joe talks about, bring mm-hmm. your heart into what you're sharing with people. So. No, they, they, they don't have intuition. Mm-hmm. No. Um, they don't have the heart. Hopefully they never will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. 
So, hey, listen, this is uh, Maze Alali. Thank you very much for coming in again. Thank you, And Jane. there's so much more to share, so I'm sure, um, again, a little way down the track, you'll, you'll come back in and, and share some more. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Jim at uh, dreaminc.eu and Hotel Boutique Leonardo here. And if you can, I would love you to like, subscribe, share, and spread the word of what we're doing on Becoming Podcasts. And I look forward to catching up with you all soon.